Welcome to Euro Channel. Today I am going to show you how to do a high quality semen analysis according to WHO. Let's do it. Okay, before we start, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell so that you can get notified whenever I post a video. When it comes to semen analysis according to WHO, it is very important that there is a sexual abstinence of three to five days because semen quality is lower when it's less than that and it's also lower if it's more than that. So I always tell my patients to have a sexual abstinence between three and five days. Another important thing is that I always tell my patients that the sample has to be complete. So whenever there is a drop spilled, they have to tell me, and especially if it's the first drop of the semen that is spilled, which contains the most sperm. It is imperative to store the sample in a warm place at all times. Otherwise, the sperm will lose their mobility and give false results. I'm using an incubator at 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. Directly after ejaculation, sperm is like a coagulated mass. So I'm waiting for around 30 minutes to test whether liquefaction has taken place. In my next step, I'm assessing acidity by using a pH dipstick test. I'm taking one of those dipsticks and dip it into the semen sample and wait for a couple of seconds. Whenever there's something that's lower than the lower threshold of 7.2, this might be a hint that there is an obstruction in the seminal pathways. So just wait for a second, what does it say? Okay, it's around, okay, it's 8.3. So this is normal. Volume is measured by weight. First, weigh the container, then subtract the weight of the container and put on the sample. And there's a lower threshold of 1.5 milliliters and we can see it's 4.9 milliliters, which is perfectly normal for this sample. In semen analysis, it's quite easy to make mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is that the sperm is not evenly distributed inside the sample. And I'm always very diligent in mixing up my samples so that I don't fall into this trap. And in order to mix it up, I have my mixer here. For motility assessment, it's even more important to have a warm environment. Therefore, I'm keeping my slides on a heating plate. I'm putting 10 microliters of ejaculate onto the slides and then I can look at them under the microscope. It's always smart to try to save some time, so while I'm doing one step and waiting for this to settle, I'm preparing for the next step. And the above two slides with a red dye on, this is vitality testing. And while I'm waiting for those, I'm preparing a semen smear. And this is done by applying two drops of semen on each of these two slides, then taking another slide and drag this drop out to a small film along the sides which then can dry and be ready for coloration. And this is how vitality testing looks like. In short, the white sperm are alive, the red ones are dead. And we need 58% at a minimum of the white ones. One of the parameters my patients are most interested in is the question, how many sperm do I have? And in order to count this, I'm using a counting chamber. And this is a so-called Neubauer improved counting chamber. You can't see it, but there are two small tiny grids imprinted in this chamber that are only visible under the microscope. Within these grids, there are squares and in these squares, there lies some sperm and I'm going to count those sperm in order to calculate the concentration afterwards. Since this is a very difficult task to do, there are two of those grids imprinted in this chamber so that I have the possibility to double check my results and this comparison 
provides a good quality result. Before starting the counting process, I have to dilute the ejaculate and this is done by using a special buffer, a so-called WHO buffer, which is placed in this cup together with the ejaculate. After having given it a good shake, I am placing a cover slide onto the chamber and with a pipette I am putting two small drops at each side of the slide. The adhesion forces will then pull the solution into the chamber and the sperm will distribute along these small grids that I was mentioning. Each grid is made up of 25 larger squares and the first step is just take one of those larger squares, count the sperm within and then determine how many of those squares one has to count. It's not always 25, if there are many sperm it could be less. In the meantime the semen smear has dried up, so let's do some staining. I'm using the diff quick method and this consists of three baths, first a fixation liquid and I dip the glass slides a couple times into this liquid so that the sperm gets fixed to the glass and doesn't wash off while staining them and then I have two staining baths which give a fine morphology of the sperm as you will soon be able to see. After staining, any excessive color has to be washed off. I'm using distilled water here. And the last step would be to wipe the water and the color from the downside of the slide before putting it again on the heating plate for drying. I'm always trying to establish whether there could be some inflammatory process going on. And for doing so, identification of leukocytes is key. So for the last 20 minutes I've incubated a mixture of semen, otoloidin and peroxidase and I'm looking for round cells. Round cells is a descriptive term of all the cells that are in the seminal plasma which are not sperm cells. And in this slide you can see some round structures. These are round cells. If there would be any leukocytes they would stain brown. So in this case, luckily, there is no suspicion of inflammation or infection. Let's go back to our seminal smears. Now it's time for sperm morphology. I'm using oil because the magnification is a thousand times and without oil I wouldn't be able to see much. The criteria for assessing sperm morphology are very strict. One has to be very picky and very careful just to choose the perfectly normal sperm cells. And it's no wonder that the threshold for normal is 4%. My patients are always very shocked when I tell them because they think it's got to be 90% at least. So let's get to microscopy. Finally we can have a look at the cells in detail and you can see what the staining has done. We have this nice blue and red colors which makes it quite easy to differentiate between the heads of the sperm cells, the mid pieces and the tails. In conclusion none of those sperm exhibit a normal morphology. But this one does. It's got a nicely formed head. You can even spot the acrosome which is right at the top of the head. This blackish structure where it fuses with the egg cell. The mid piece is not bloated. The tail is straight and long so it's a perfectly formed cell. I just wanted to show you this. This is what I'm using for calculation. These are my tables where I look up my results because as I said I always have to double check all my results and if I'm wrong sorry I have to do it again. But today I was lucky. It just took me about two hours to get the results and I'm quite satisfied with those because there wasn't much spreading. So this is it for today. If you want more of this content please feel free to subscribe to my channel and I am going to see you next week for the next topic. Goodbye.